You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. WGPR Detroit HD2. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabri. We are living through unprecedented times with a global pandemic now approaching its third year. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. See if you qualify. Please visit. Call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help. Good morning. If you were looking for the weekly broadcast of the Ask Welfare Rights Broadcast, our weekly program, you've been successful once again. We are here. Uh, my name is Maureen Taylor, and I work with the Michigan Welfare Rights Organization. And uh, we're in the same building, but in a different part of the building today. Uh, in the front studio, that's kind of interesting, because usually we're at the back door. But today we're at the front door at WHPR. To make our broadcast official, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, the National Welfare Rights Union President, Marion Kramer, who's going to give you an official welcome. So, Marion, say good morning. Good morning, and like always, we're so happy to be here this morning. Uh, uh, at least it's not raining. Uh, Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, remember, I, I, I know y'all know this better than, than me now, you know. When you call in, please turn down your radio or whatever you might be listening to where we can hear you. That's right. Um, we need to hear your voice and what's going on in the community because there's a lot going on in the community, and we want to know what you think about it. And the call-in numbers are still the same. No, they're not the same. Oh, they're Remember? not yeah, the now same. Now, read the new numbers. Now, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 313? Uh, uh, wait a minute, Mo. Hold on. Uh, when you call in, 313-365-7322. Or you could call 313-365-7379. And, and those of you that have a, a computer, uh, it's www.tv33, uh, yeah, TV33, uh, I can't see. You can hold it up to your face. Uh, uh, www. Yeah, I got all that. Three, uh, TV33. W, w yeah no 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 we what is you wrong give it to me no i got it, 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 it you it, stay it, over there in your uh, corner it, hold it up stay your over face. there in your corner w w w all right i'm ready tv 33 uh <laughs> what's the rest of it uh uh 33 w h p r uh, dot dot com. com. You see, she always got to put her little notes in here, you know. That's because I have 2020 vision. No, she ain't yeah, got I no 2020 see. vision. She just right. got some new glasses. I don't and have them, still, no glasses. And, and uh, she don't <laughs> still don't have them on. Move it on, Maureen. All right. Uh, we're, uh, like I said, we're in the front part of the studio today. 313-365-7327 or 313-365-7329. 7379. Uh, as you know, we've been focusing the last couple of weeks on issues connected to water, water departments, access to water, mm. uh, lead in the water, all kinds of water kinds of issues because it's been first and foremost on the news. There's a, a number of programs being offered on uh, the local channels about water department programs that the city of Detroit 
is offering. And uh, we always like to say to everybody, you know, the devil is in the details. That's right. So we have to get a little bit more information about what it is that the city of Detroit is offering in terms of something they're calling a water affordability program. And we're a little concerned about that. Uh, right now it looks like rationing, where each family, low-income family, is going to be entitled to a certain amount of gallons of water per month. And then after that, something else happens. So uh, we're not supporting or we're not uh, co-signing anything at this moment as we uh, go through a series of discussions with the Detroit Water and Sewage Department. So today what we've done, uh, several weeks ago as a matter of fact, Marion was very lucky and able to get in contact with some folks in the Highland Park area. And uh, uh, we have a special guest, Mr. Damon Garrett uh, from Highland Park, uh, is here with us today. And Mr. Garrett, uh, so glad and welcome. At first, when you came in, he looks like a teenager. He looks like oh. a high school Watch kid. Watch out, I'm Mo. telling you. Had my daughter here. Who is this guy? <laughs> and then it took a while to remember. So we want to welcome Mr. Garrett and ask him to uh, give us a brief overview of what's going on with the water and the water department and the water situations in Highland Park. And so welcome, Mr. Garrett. Go thank, ahead. Thank you, Maureen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Marion. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you brought up something interesting in the, in the rationing uh, before I, I talk about Highland Park. And I, and I know there's some other departments that are doing that, but I think uh, the challenge with that is you, you need to sit down with people and have some water education. You need to educate people about their usage first right. before you move to a ration because some people just need to understand how they're using water and without putting an official ration on it, if they understood more about the water they use, uh, maybe they could ration themselves. They don't need an official ration and that's, you know, I've heard that before. I understand why they do that. It, you know, it's cost control for for the resident and, and for the utility, but I believe there's some steps that are missing before you get to that point where you need to do some education. You need to meet people in their space and ask them, do you even understand how much you're using? Do you have leaks? Like, like let's do some educational things. So we could come back to that, but I'm glad you, uh, the ladies had me on this morning. Um, you know, we're doing the business of the water department. Um, you know, we've been in Highland Park since 2014, mm -hmm. uh, and we've been we've been we've been doing a lot of work. Uh, you know, we we've secured on behalf of the the, the citizens uh, over 50 million dollars, uh, and that those fit, that 50 million dollars has been a combination of grants and loans. Uh, I believe about 30 million dollars has been uh, on the grant side, and and the balance have been in loans. So. As everyone knows, that the infrastructure in Highland Park is uh, is in in disrepair. It, ne it needs some work. Which, you know, as you talk about affordability, those are one. That's one of the main things that 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 impacts that water affordability piece because mm -hmm. you can't not take care of the infrastructure and then all of a sudden want to fix it 35 years later. You know, and that that puts a burden on on the residents. And you know, if if we're not having development in the city. We don't have a, we, our, ta our, our water users are not diversified. So the, the residents end up bearing all that water uh, responsibility, which we've noticed. And, you know, you're starting to see some things pick up in the city as far as some developments, getting some other users here, which will help diversify the, the, the financial burden that's been placed on the residents. So, um, you know, every year we're actively seeking money. Um, you know, we, we know a lot of people on a first name basis. We love being in Highland Park. We, we've been here. Uh, I didn't know much about Highland Park before we got here, mm -hmm. but we love it in Highland Park. We love the people. Uh, there's a lot of negativity out there in the news about Highland Park and the people in Highland Park, but the people in Highland Park are, are wonderful people. Yes, they are. And, and I know that because we've met with them and, and people like Marion and other people in the community and just had honest conversations with them. And, you know, sometimes we don't see eye to eye, but we work through it. So I'm happy to be here today. I'm, I'm happy to be working in Highland Park. I want to continue to be in Highland Park. It's a wonderful place to be. Okay. Uh, Marion, you have a question or comment you want to make? or? Um, I see Damon often, often when I go up there and find out what's going, get nosy, Maureen, and I go up there. You know, I 
go around and check thing. But, um, you know, I know that uh, here in Highland Park, um, they have made a, uh, uh, you know, they have tried to uh, work with us um, more so, let me say this, than what's in the way I usually, I usually in Detroit um, uh, stuff all the time. But uh, we do need to, you know, start the education again on folks uh, mm -hmm. because the situation is not getting better. It's getting worse. Uh, you know, for a company to lie on us, mm -hmm. and we know that company, Great Lakes Water Authority, and they boss, they big boss and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you begin to think, what are these people trying to do, kill us? Because they knew that the, the, that that this this lead was here a long time ago, but I have to do I have to really say that uh, it's been easier with Damon here. But then and again, he is not the one that uh, that have to um, you know that's been giving us the hell like that. He you know he's working on himself. And a family, but uh, and I know Damon is shocked that I would say something like that. <laughs> uh, but uh, again, we we're gonna still have to fight around our, around this water thing, Maureen. And you know what we ran into in ba uh, what Baltimore, mm -hmm. and our membership there, they're having some of the same problem. And who are the people benefiting from this in the final it's corporations. analysis? It's these darn corporations that don't give a hoot. I had to watch myself about Highland Park and other other uh, particular low income cities and stuff. So you know, I'm glad to see Damon here, and I want to know if there's some new programs for people because look, you can't live but what three hours. I'm I mean, in time. I used to say this. You can't three. You, you three, can just say you can't live yeah, not very long. Not <laughs> with, without water. And and these people think that they are they're the only ones should be able to have this. So this is our water. And the people in Highland Park have been coming together as of late. We had a great, uh, you know, building of uh, black club, black clubs in the community, and, and and what have you. Once they get through, you know, doing that, they gonna have to. We gonna have to get together and really go after Great Lakes, because I'm telling you, Damon, uh, that's a company we cannot get along with. Now, yeah. what uh, Marion is talking about, if in case uh, uh, folks don't understand, the Great Lakes Water Authority has been involved uh, with a whole lot of um, conversations on TV. Uh, it's good, Marion. It's stop. Okay. And the conversations that we're hearing is um, a mayor from Sterling Heights oh, or a nice. mayor from some other location is on TV talking about the reason that the water rates in the immediate area are going up is because the people in Highland Park won't pay their bills. And that is patently not true. So I know that there are some discussions going on about how to, all the phones are ringing, and we'll just put them down to the ground. <laughs> Everybody's calling, and, and they must be calling for a reason. So we'll figure it out later. But the other thing, and Mr. Garrett, perhaps you can comment on this. Uh, some of this sounds like more of a political uh, oh uh, position, God, yeah. but, you know, whether or not people have the right to have water seems to be what the discussion is. And what do you do when Highland Park used to have 61,000 uh, people in this little hamlet, and now it's less than 10,000 people? What does that mean when your tax base is, is uh, in some uh, uh, challenging positions and folks that used to live here just like the folks that used to live in Detroit at one time we had almost two million mm -hmm. and now we're about six hundred thousand plus which means we've lost a million people over a period of a few years and I think that that has a lot to do I can remember when Marion and I and Richard Harrison we would be talking about what it means when the population starts to change mm -hmm. and, and uh, 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 the, the benefits that you have when you have 2 million people are different than the benefits you might be able to scrape together if you got six or 700,000. So, Mr. Uh, Garrett, say something about uh, the loss of population, the loss of a tax base, and how does Highland Park or Detroit 
or Pontiac or Flint or Benton Harbor or any other place, how do you uh, manage that uh, when you have this one thing that happens and it affects the other? Go ahead, Mr. Garrett, uh, uh, share your thoughts. Yeah, that's a, a very, very uh, astute observation. And, I, you know, I'm originally from Flint, so I, I've gone Ooh. through oh. through the, the shrinkage, if you will, mm -hmm. of, of the population. And with that, you know, the businesses leave, uh, the people leave, and you're left with a small amount of people and your your revenue you, you have a problem with revenue but you still have the same infrastructure and I think you know I, I, I've been trying to talk to some of the people at the state of Michigan is like you know where are you when you see these early early uh, indicators uh, school district you know no longer having schools um, big businesses leaving Th those are things that people but outside of the community at a state level need to pay attention to because we all know what comes next. This is how we get to where we are right now. And, That's right. And then for the people that are there, they're overburdened. And then you talk about the affordabilities. You still have to maintain the infrastructure. Uh, and, and that cost, unfortunately, gets passed along to the people who are left, which, is, which creates a problem, right? Because those same people that were there, we're, we're, we're able to pay their bills, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden now you're talking about 10 percent increase, 20, 30, 40, you, you know, and, and, and nobody can absorb that. So our focus has been is talking to the people in the state of Michigan about are you paying attention when these things are happening? What are you doing? Uh, are you supporting those mayors, those community economic development people with get, retaining that tax base? Because if you don't do that, you're basically going to run those people out, and it's, it's, a, it's a gentrification process that happens. So, we, so to answer your question, we, we, we try to talk to the people at the state level and, and, and say, hey, listen, you've seen it in Benton Harbor, you've seen it in Flint, you've seen it in Highland Park, Jackson. I mean, all, all of the, all the communities that look like Highland Park, you see it. And then all of a sudden they change. You know, you see in downtown Detroit, it's different than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, need, we need to just make sure that early in the game we, we are addressing that. And, you know, and I, I was thinking preparing coming down, you know, to how, how, do, how do these rates, how, how do we get into this situation? Well, you know, when all of that, all those people leave, the infrastructure, you know, the, the, the people who are maintaining that also leave, the expertise leave. Mm -hmm. So you start having depreciating assets that are in the ground, right? So, and then they need to be repaired, right? Mm -hmm. So then, so that's all Constantly. driving costs, and that mm -hmm. is all passed back. And so, you know, when, when, when the schools are struggling, the state needs to step in and help those schools because, you know, that's the population. People want to, we want to be attractive. We want people to move into the community, not to move out. That's right. That's uh, the other right. thing Marion brought up, which for the last three years, it's, there needs to be regulation over water utilities, like right. just like there is over DTE and consumers. The, the electric utilities have regulations. They have the MPSC. Gliwa is, is, is operating as a monopoly. They don't have any kind of regulation, so they get to do whatever, whatever they, they want to do. Mm -hmm. And you talked about this misinformation that's out there. You know, Highland Park has contracts and had contracts going back to the 80s that they're not honoring, and the message that they put out on the news is, is we're not paying the bills. Well, the, the reality of it is, is for many years, since 15, Highland the Park should only have been paying $4 million. They were paying $13 million, so they were overpaying. So Highland Park's position is, is we can no longer do that. You, you've collected that money, mm -hmm. so we're not giving it back to you. And so all of a sudden now, we don't pay our bills. Yeah, and that's, that's not a problem. That, yeah, and that's not been the case. So yeah. um, anytime I'm on, on with anybody, I try to let them know what the facts are. Is Highland Park has paid their bills. They, they're just honoring their contracts, and Glee was running a business, and they, you know, they, they have a revenue requirement where they want to make a certain amount of money, and it's, it's at anybody's expense. Highland Park, Flint, Benton Harbor, that's what they do, and they need to be regulated. I mean, that's really one of the main, main problems is regulation at that level. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's a, a, a clear assessment of what the uh, problem is. Now, Marion and I, she mentioned it already, we were in Baltimore a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we were, were involved in organizing training and, and in D.C. after that. And uh, uh, Baltimore is looking at a water affordability plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we have um, mailed out our water affordability plan this, the, the one we have in uh, the Detroit Highland Park area 
is the one that we created in 2005 and in 2006 and 2007. It was ready to go out. And we took it uh, down to the Detroit City Council, and they approved it. And we took it over to the mayor, and the mayor approved it. And then it went to the shelf, and it sat on the shelf. And just about every year after that, we've been talking about, let's go back to water affordability, because it was clear that the population was going down, mm -hmm. and we needed to do something. But um, uh, uh, I have, and I think Welfare Rights has a certain perspective about this water. Uh, uh, I remember the first time, I can't think of that, that rat named Covington or something like that. He was a, oh, a yeah. city of Detroit water uh, communication director or something mm -hmm. like that. His first name was George. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And he raised the point. Almost everything he said was wrong all the time. But he did raise this one point and made it clear that at one time, uh, 123 Main Street had 15 houses on this side of the street 15 houses on this side of the street, and there were people living in all of those properties. Then there came a time, 10, 12, 15, 20 years later, uh, those properties were demolished because people had moved out. And now you have two people that live on this side of the street, three people that live on this side of the street. All the rest of the properties are empty or demolished. And he was making the point that when that happens, you still have to provide water to those two and those three. You still have to have street lights for those two and those three. And that was, uh, uh, that stuck in my mind. And it just goes back to a foundation question. Do people who are low income, mm -hmm. do they have the right to have public water and sanitation? And a lot of people connect that question to whether or not they can pay for it. Because, you know, Marion and I have been all kinds of places, and people will tell us, well, if they, can't, if they can't pay for the water, that means they can't have it. <laughs> and see, that's, that's the, wrong, attitude. the wrong attitude, the wrong philosophical position, certainly the wrong political position. And when I raised this point about Highland Parkers used to be at this population, now it's here. Detroit used to be at this population, and now it's here. Then there has to be programs set up so that even low-income people that are almost always the ones left still have to have access to water, uh, public water and sanitation. Mm -hmm. And to not do that is a, is a blight against the country. So, uh, Marion, I don't know if you want to comment on that, and then we'll let Mr. Garrett see what he thinks about this is a deep this, political this is, question, but go ahead, Mary. Yeah, uh, when it comes, you know, it, it just hurts. I get so angry when uh, when people even in, in, in the, uh, our city talk about, uh, well, it's uh, poor people not paying their bills and stuff. We got some people right now moving into Highland Park, and they don't want, uh, they don't want to move in because the place is too close, uh, talking about including low-income people coming in. That's, a, that's, that's some backwards type of stuff. And if they don't want to move in Highland Park, get the road, you know. Uh, we didn't, we didn't uh, stop you from moving in Highland Park. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's that attitude that is constantly out here. And one thing I know, all the years that we have that uh, work uh, for our membership and the vast majority of low-income people, one thing they will try to do, they will try to get their money together to pay, and the seniors in particular, and they will not eat their food to, uh, to make sure that they have something, uh, some, some lights on or something on, and, and then people come around and say, you ought, to, you ought to do this, that, and the other. Well, those same people that come in here and criticize us and talk about us, well, you need to, you need to get on the road and don't even come through Island Park. So, right. you know, it's, it's at that point now that this war, we've been fighting, and you wouldn't believe how long we've been fighting over this Decades. War. Decades of, of this, uh, uh, not only here, in other cities and stuff that, you know, the water affordability plan is, 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 is something that could be implemented for the benefit not only of of uh, the individuals and, and that type of stuff. But when you talk about the infrastructure, 
that money that that we had laid out as far as the budget around the water affordability plan, you will have the opportunity of people paying. <clears throat> excuse me, being on a payment plan that they can afford. You know, and where do you think that DTE got that, that stuff from? It, it didn't come out of their head. No. It came out of we took it to us, them. our heads, you know, and, it, you know, we stay on them. Uh, but, you know, it's coming to the time. I don't know if you know. Why, watch know, it now. Watch it I now. I know Detroit and I know Flint. But people are getting angry with this mess. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm glad that you came today. Uh, because uh, you do come to th come to activities and what have you, and we do whoop your little old butt, and you go right on and <laughs> do what you got to do and everything. But you know, uh, in the final analysis, we represent low income people, and anybody we have, we got other folks call in and and want to join welfare rights and stuff like that because they ain't been able to make it, and and, and we don't turn people down. No, we don't. No, we, we do don't. not. But yet and still. We live we live here in Highland Park, Detroit, Benton Harbor, uh, Hamtramck, and all that mm -hmm. stuff, and 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 the so-called people running for office, all they, we all see them when it's time for election. The, election. Yeah, yeah. And they don't do lies. nothing about mm -hmm. the uh, fight for fight for the war. They need to be out here every day finding out what's going on in the community. It's, uh, so, you know, I'm glad you're here. You're welcome to come back. Well, he's not finished yet. It sounds like uh, you're trying to tell him I'm, goodbye. He's no, still got to answer this question. He's got to come through you me got to answer this question about whether or not uh, low-income people uh, have the right to have water or not. So he got to answer that. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, he's going to do that while you uh, put your headset back on. My headset won't stay on Yes, my head. it will. You know, uh -huh. all that so brains up there uh -huh. is, uh, having it. Go, go, all go. Right. Uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Garrett. Uh, give us your uh, thoughts about this. So absolutely everybody, it's, it's, it's a necessity to live. Yes. Okay. You cannot, people cannot or should not be without water. But Marion talked about, well, first let me say something else about people in perception of Highland Park. 85% of the people in this town pay their bills. Mm -hmm. 85%. That's a good so, number. That's so a good. you're talking about, you know, an underserved community. Mm -hmm. That is tremendous. With the seniors, they do that. On fixed income, so they do that. So I, that needs to be out there with the rates with the way they are that are unaffordable. Mm -hmm. uh, so... But, but Marion brought up a really, 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 really key point. And the affordability plan, people have to meet the people and understand what their financial situation is mm -hmm. and devise things. What we found is, is if you meet these people, you talk to these people, they say, hey, look, I can't pay my bill this month because I got these issues. I lost my job. I'm taking care of my mother, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you come in here and you tell us the truth, We'll work with you on that. Yep, you Just have. honor your word. And most mm. of these people, but you, but that's, you got to get out of your seat. You got to get off your butt. You have to do mm. something. And you got to talk to these people yeah. and understand. So when you sell water to 2,000 people, you got to know all those 2,000 people and understand what their situation is. And when you meet those people, you'll find that they'll pay their bills. They'll, they'll eventually c come through. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're just going to send out a bill and you're not going to talk to these people and understand and give them any grace on their situation, you got a problem. Now, this other thing that you talked about, which I, I've tried to figure out from an engineering standpoint, when you have the, the block, the example that you gave, Ms. Taylor, from mm -hmm. 15 to 15 to 2 and 3, mm -hmm. so the, you're producing less water because you have less people. less people. The challenge is it still has to travel through the same pipe network. Still. So, so I believe that there has to be some kind of offset an escrow of that because if I've got 60,000 people and I got 10, I don't have to spend as much to produce that water. I still got to right. get it there. Mm -hmm. But the delta between the 10 and 60, that needs to be set aside so you can have a true cost for those people. And that needs to, that needs to be pushed up. It, it almost, this is a, probably a word I don't want to use, but it's somebody, it needs to be subsidized because people can't no pay. No question about it. They cannot, they not, they can't pay for that and they should not have to pay for that. And, and you should incentivize getting those people back on. This is where, you know, I've learned in Highland Park is, you know, we get, we have some 
in these communities, we get a lot of infighting between these departments. You know, the mayor, the administration's office not working with the department and oh the Everybody has to work together. Have to. So when we when we say we're working together, we are attracting development. We're all out representing the community. Come, come here. We want you here. We have to incentivize people to get back into the city because we want to get those numbers up so we can offset those costs. There's a number of different things. Got to have affordability plan. You got to meet people in their space. You got to educate. You got to work. You got to grind. I mean, really, it's what it comes down to. And the people who are still in this community, they're grinders. They've been, they've been through it. They have. They've, mm -hmm. In Detroit, they've been through it. And, and right. to stay through all the roads and in, in, uh, 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 the condition that the roads are in, they, they stay. And those people are fighters. And we, and they, and we need people to come and I join them along their side and get into that. And I found out, you know, you get all these engineering degrees, you got all these certifications. Oh my God, but yeah. this stuff is about people. It's at the it's bottom, about, it's at about the end people. of the day, it's about people. And that's what I really liked when I came to Highland Park is like before, you know, my career, I, I tell people, you know, I really enjoy, even though it's stressful dealing with politics and all this, mm -hmm. the last seven, eight years been way, great. Why? Because I feel like all the education, all the knowledge I've had, I'm able to leverage with the people. Before that, I was just a business guy making money doing business. But now I know I'm impacting people's lives. It's the, important. And when I don't do the right thing, you know, I'm accountable for that. So I got I to gotta have my stuff together. Because I know Mary's okay. going to come and say, hey, why are you doing that? Yep. This don't make no sense. You need to explain it to me. I have no problem. We have a conversation. Mm -hmm. we, might need, we might not agree, but we're going to have the conversation. We're going to move forward. Even if we disagree, we're going to move forward. And that's what, that's, that's what we need to be doing in, in, in our communities. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Garrett, if you don't mind, we'll keep you here about another seven or eight minutes. Uh, uh, I'm here. Uh, uh, okay. Don't want to ruin your day. Um, this, this question of infrastructure... And that's the big question that's going around all of these cities, Pontiac, mm -hmm. Flint, Benton Harbor, Highland Park, yeah. Detroit, whole nine yards. And a uh, number of mayors uh, over the years have not been able to or didn't see the need hmm. to try to keep up infrastructure. And I think, uh, 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 Tim, you know, every winter there's <laughs> a, a, a pipe that bursts somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I remember a year, was it, I guess it was last year, uh, when pipes burst on the freeway. I'll never forget that down on uh, the I-94. And a water pipe burst. And that's when we found out that the pumps were not able to accept that amount yeah, of water. And uh, it was rising, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of looking for Noah's Ark. It was rising <laughs> so fast. And then the next thing that happened for two or three days, uh, people were struggling, trying to get tow trucks to move their cars. And then the next thing that happened is that these tow truck companies absolutely went rogue and started charging people three, oh four, God. five, six hundred dollars to get their cars back. And that's the kind of thing that makes people hate government activities because the government should have been able to go there. That was a crisis should have been able to pull crisis dollars, go and fix that. And you got these independent companies like Great Lakes Water Authority mm. coming in and going to raise the cost of water and blame people in Highland Park for it. So part of the welfare rights position is that when you have emergency situations, and certainly Marion had a hole dug in front of her house for a long time, the water department and whatever else was going on down there, and it was relegated to a one-way street mm -hmm. for the longest time. But these were infrastructure problems where the pipes had been there 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Whose fault is that? And why is it that the residents, not a problem in trying to pull our money together to pay for it, but that means there should not be anybody in Detroit, Highland Park, Hamtramck, without water, because we didn't do that. This was management. This was the government locally that did not, for whatever reason, make uh, uh, repairs and adjustments. And not a problem if, okay, everybody's got to pay another $10 a month on a water bill. Then at the same time, when we raise this about water affordability, we're saying folks ought to be able to take a percentage, get your water bill, Add all, add what you had to pay for the entire year, divided by 12, add $5 to it, 
and maybe that amount comes out, that average comes out to be uh, $22, $27 a month. That's what your water bill is. And if at the end of the year you still have a balance, we have a welfare department that gets millions. The welfare I mean, department yeah, should be writing a check yeah. for whatever that balance is. And at the end of the year, you start zero, zero. So I wanted to say that to you, uh, Mr. Garrett, because we have done these figures a long time. Wanted to give you the, the thumbnail version of the water affordability plan. That's the way it's supposed to work. So, uh, Mr. Garrett, give us your, your thought about that, and then uh, we'll... Uh, 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 let you go and you can manage the rest of your day. So comment on that uh, concept. I, I want to, before I get to the thumbnail, and I love that program, I, you, you talked about who is responsible for that infrastructure problem. Yep. And um, w what, what, I, what I can say is, is that the one thing that all these communities need to do it's is great. have this asset management down. And, mm. and, and what we did when we got here was the first thing that we did, we took assessment. Every pipe we had, every valve we had, every hydrant we had. And you know what that made us? That made us fundable. That made us, that made, we, could, we can take that same plan anytime money's available and say, here's the Highland Park plan. We need, mm -hmm. we need $10 million. We need $3 million. Anything that's available. And what happens is, is when you don't have that, that money gets appropriated somewhere else. Mm -hmm. so, the, so you need to have proper management of your assets. And if you do, then you have a plan and you can maintain. Without that plan, you, you, you're going to end up with the infrastructure problem. And when they had people that were in before people started leaving these communities, mm -hmm. they needed to have those plans on file. And, and, and that's the biggest thing missing because you can always say, I need... I need $50 million. My plan is gone. And here's my report that says my plan is gone. And I, I need, look at these roads. I got yes. 100 miles of roads. And here's my plan that says I need, to, I need my roads fixed, but I need $150 million to do it. So that is what's missing. And if there's any advice I could give to any administration, if you don't have that, you need to get that in order so that you can take advantage of these funds so you, ASAP. Can, you can bring. Yeah. Now, and the, we've got federal dollars available right now. Yes. So now's time to move and but get you know, it right. But, but they're going to give those mo that money to those communities that are shovel ready, right? And and those communities are probably not going to look like you and I. May not. Right. Mm -hmm. So so I'm saying moving forward is we got to get our act together and go and, get a shovel. And, and right. And, <laughs> and, these, and these plans that we have done for Highland Park. We can share this plan with Flint. We can share this plan with Pontiac. We, we can work together. That's right. That's right? right. And if we come together as a coalition, we can get those dollars and bring our communities back. But if we're all separate and we're over here doing this and not talking to this hand, the left hand, we always, we're going to not get out of this situation. So that's, that's, right. that's the infrastructure piece. Now, uh, on this, on this. Uh, Water this, affordability. Yeah, on that, what you talked about, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. I, I love that plan. Uh, but. You people got to know that hey, and, and that this is what we can do, and I love the zero reset. We get we we got the delta. Yes. And you get it. You go and you get funding for that, and you take care of it, and we start fresh. We start fresh. And I don't I don't see why we can't do that. There's not a problem with that. But again, I talked about you got to meet people in their space and understand what their situation is, and and educate them about their water use, educate them about the cost of water, educate them about their bill. Those things are very important. Yes. So that's what I would leave with is um, we, we want to be in, we in this uh, and uh, every time I've been speaking with, with, with Sylvia and other members of the community, yeah. mm -hmm. I've been talking to Eagle. This, I'm very passionate about this because I feel like it's my personal responsibility. The position that I'm in, I have these people's ear. I need to speak. Because I'm speaking on behalf of the people who cannot, who don't have the knowledge, don't have the access. I have to, I have to utilize that. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed with that. So that's kind of why I'm passionate about it. Uh -huh. Well, now, Marion has something she wants to say. Go uh -huh. ahead, Marion. Well, I forgot that quick. Oh, <laughs> but well, any, anyway. That's because the headphones squeezing your head. Too. <laughs> You're not kidding. This, I don't it's just know, different. I don't know how people walk around with these things on all the time. Uh, they get used to it. Oh, no. Uh, 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 and I see you just took it off again. Uh, yeah, I can't take it. Uh, uh, but um, water affordability. I, I, no, yeah. Besides that, um, um, in in Highland Park, we uh, I uh, we hope that you come back. Okay. And and we still talk 
what we can get probably over, you know, in Highland Park, other places to uh, meet up and, and try to teach people what it means, you know, uh, how much water. So I don't, look, I usually go in my kitchen and I might be, I know I'm using too much water at times. But and when I smell that something that's in the pipe and stuff mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. you you don't want to drink nothing in Holland Park. And right. I don't like going out and buying bottled bottle water, water and stuff like that because bottled water, you know, uh, is not as good as uh, tap water. Tap water. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's something that uh, we need to look at and pull the other cities. I don't know, you know, we can get Flint in here. We can get all of them in here and talk about this water situation. Because, see, these, these, I'm not, I'm going I'm to be on, we're going to be on uh, Great Lakes. Because they should have never opened up their mouth talking, lying on us. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and that's what they do. And they outright lying on this, on the city. Uh, of Highland Park and Highland Park people should be outraged about this. Mm -hmm. So I want to say I thank you for coming. Um, I know it was hard getting here. Uh, the, you requested it, uh, mm -hmm. and we hope you come back and keep us uh, with uh, what's going on in the park. Uh, we're gonna have a few additional meetings yeah. and grabbing some of these representatives from other uh, cities. Okay. And yeah. we want very much to uh, to have you involved in those discussions. That's so, what I was gonna say. Is, okay. is is we get some joint sessions and we we're gonna bring, do that. And we we will do that. And Marion's right on this education piece is getting out in these streets and and explaining to people what this is. And we we're all about that. And we we want to if we need to build programs and a template Mary, around that you, we can do that. We're not over yet. Uh, Mary's know, trying to wrap up the program. We can do that, and, <laughs> and, and, and we'll be and, and I'll be back, Miss Taylor. I, like I said, I, well, I'm here I, to I have your card now, so there's no way. Let me just make sure I can see oh, this cell phone, cards. office phone, and I see a email address. Yes, ma'am. We got you now. That's right. We I'm got here, you I'm now. Here to stay. All right. Uh, this is our favorite uh, program. And we have a wonderful guest that has been here with us for the last 30-plus uh, minutes, Mr. Garrett, who is a expert on water, water affordability, water management, and whatnot. And we want to say thank you for uh, coming in. And uh, this is not the last time you'll be here. Uh, uh, Mr. Tim, uh, what we're going to do is take a quick break so we can allow our guest a chance to uh, uh, jump out the front door. And uh, thank you, everybody. Hold on. We'll be right back. Uh, Hold on, Mary. Sabri, we are living through unprecedented times with a global pandemic now approaching its third year. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. See if you qualify. Please visit. Call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here. Muscles, joints, or feet tired, achy, or distressed? Tried everything? Ringmaster Rubbing Oil is a vintage topical pain reliever, trusted for over 70 years, with a rich formula for the treatment of stubborn aches and pains. Packaged in a glass bottle for purity, our liquid can also be used in warm water for foot soaks and compresses. A little goes a long way. Try our time-tested formula, available in several sizes. Make a donation to WHBR-TV and receive two two-ounce bottles of Ringmaster Rubbing Oil for $25. Call 313-868-6612. Let's relish these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. <laughs> Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Let's cherish these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the celebrations going 
by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Muscles, joints, or feet tired, achy, or distressed? Tried everything? Ringmaster Rubbing Oil is a vintage topical pain reliever, trusted for over 70 years, with a rich formula for the treatment of stubborn aches and pains. Packaged in a glass bottle for purity, our liquid can also be used in warm water for foot soaks and compresses. A little goes a long way. Try our time-tested formula, available in several sizes. Make a donation to WHBR-TV and receive two two-ounce bottles of Ringmaster Rubbing Oil for $25. Call 313-868-6612. Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now, time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. Muscles, joints, or feet tired, achy, or distressed? Tried everything? Ringmaster Rubbing Oil is a vintage topical pain reliever, trusted for over 70 years, with a rich formula for the treatment of stubborn aches and pains. Packaged in a glass bottle for purity, our liquid can also be used in warm water for foot soaks and compresses. A little goes a long way. Try our time-tested formula, available in several sizes. Make a donation to WHBR-TV and receive two two-ounce bottles of Ringmaster Rubbing Oil for $25. Call 313-868-6612. Let's savor these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabree. We are living through unprecedented times with a global pandemic now approaching its third year. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. See if you qualify. Please visit. Call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help. Uh, we just had a wonderful guest, Mr. Garrett, mm -hmm. uh, uh, was our guest th uh, this morning, and we're very grateful that he was able to pull himself together and uh, get on here so we can have this conversation about Highland Park and the water situation in Highland Park. Uh, don't know if anybody uh, was trying to call in, 313-365-7327 or 365-7379. Uh, Mary and I heard yesterday that the Sarah program that we've been talking oh about for God. two years, yeah. mm -hmm. it ended yesterday. Hmm. And so folks that were able to get rent paid back 12 months, uh, 12 months worth of uh, light and gas and water bills paid, if you did not move quickly enough, and I know between the two of us, we sent lots of people over to the Sarah that. program to get some assistance, but it looks like yesterday, the 30th of June was the last day for that program. Uh, we need to check because remember when Sabri was, Mr. Sabri was here last week. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, about my half. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, we need to look in that. But on the other hand, we need to listen, folks. If you're listening out there, just like we talked about the water affordability plan, 
we also should make these lazy um, people that uh, claim that they are part of, uh, that they represent my interests, they need to go and see about getting some more programs and because it's not easy uh, trying to get people to come in and try to take care of themselves. They're afraid, a lot of them are afraid, Maureen, thinking that, uh, yeah. you know, and you know it and I know it, but at the afraid that they're, they're going to uh, be put out uh, don't want to go. You know, it's it's a whole lot of things out here. If you're concerned about the community, mm-hmm. then you'll go the extra step. And that's one thing I like, uh, you know, uh, about Sabri. He has been doing something like that as Long well as uh, uh, mm-hmm. um, Mr. Garrett. Mr. Garrett came in, you know. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, that show you that at least there's some interest from some of the uh, people that's supposed to be uh, that you know, care about people in the community. Well, let me say something else, too, that I think I mentioned to you last night. I got a call. I got a text message, as a matter of fact. There are folks that are low income who have been receiving food stamps. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And they're calling it the the, uh, COVID pandemic um, extra food stamp program it's not that's not the exact name of it but that's the point uh-huh. uh because uh the cost of living particularly in buying food w- shot up so high um governor uh decided we need additional money for a little bit longer and uh governor whitmer has extended this uh subsidized uh food stamp program through the end of october uh-huh. now what i'm told is that, uh, for instance, uh, uh, you got regular food stamps, let's just say $350 a month. Then you had a supplemental amount that gave you an additional $250. So now that's $600 worth of food stamps. And she put an additional three or $400 on that. Mm-hmm. All right? And food only. And the, the way this new f- food stamp, uh, uh, it's not food stamp, but this new additional amount of money was made available is that you could go to a Myers or Kroger's or I guess you needed to pick one and then they gave you a card that said you can go to Myers and get food, Kroger's get food, you know, mm-hmm. uh, wherever you go. And what has happened is that one of these scammers out here in the community found a way to duplicate, clone that new card. And so if Tim has $400 on this new card, he gets ready to use it, and it says $200. Well, he thinks that the uh, the amount on the card has been cut down by the government, and that's not what happened. It's these criminals that got that card and went to Myers or Kroger's, wherever they went, and got $200 off of your card. And the way they were been able to figure it out it's the same way everybody that steals identity. First, they go in and they buy a, a, a something that costs a dollar. And if the card goes through, then they know, okay, this card, this card is available for me to use. And they go and access large amounts. Now, I made a couple of calls, and then I called you about this. And folks are per- pretty much saying, well, you know, I don't really want to file a hearing because that oh, takes yes. too long, uh-huh. and I don't want to, you know, have the government looking at me, and I don't want the welfare department involved in my business. Uh, this should be something that welfare rights should manage. And that's why I called you about this last night. I'm not dragging welfare rights into this. No. If you don't want to get off your butt and go do something about you being robbed of food stamps, I don't care. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not dragging welfare rights into this because you don't want to go out here and struggle for not only what's right for you, but you don't give a darn about nobody else. And this is what's going on and what I'm told, and see what you think about this, Mary. This is happening in Detroit, Highland Park, Hamtramck, Pontiac, Flint, Benton Harbor, and Saginaw. Now, what communities are those? Low income. Low income and oftentimes people of color. Mm-hmm. So, Mary, what do you want to say to these folks that don't want to write a hearing? I don't want to do anything. I don't want to organize. I don't want to uh, get involved. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. What do you say, Mary? Well, you just sit there and you don't have to want uh, want to do it, but the rest of us are moving on. Uh, 
and and we know what happens. They usually call welfare rights, and and say, uh, well, well, I'm I just sorry. found out. Uh, you know, and I want you better get up, uh, you know, and and begin to get active, because things are not uh, like they used to be. Mm. Yes, it's in your hands, it's in my hands, it's in all our hands to stop the nonsense that is going on out here. So, you know, when you call those numbers from welfare rights, uh, 868, uh, that's not welfare that's rights. That's not welfare. 964 0618, 964 0618. You might hear a person saying, uh, when, once you call and you're talking about you don't want uh, to go in for a hearing or something like that, uh, we have, we're telling our, our staff and every stuff like that, and all of us are saying, look, you don't want to do it just like Maureen said, then uh, you're going to have to go to another welfare uh, and that uh, w- rights organization. Maybe they'll help you, but I doubt it. Yeah, we're, we're not I interested. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. And then I'll say this one more thing because we're getting down to the last four or five minutes. You know, uh, the number to welfare rights, 313-964-0618. We have uh, a number of programs that are starting to end. So the eviction defense group will be pulled up to, you know, try to see what they can do to help people that are being evicted. I saw a lady last night on TV that was being evicted from uh, Garden View Estates, the old Herman Gardens, and she was uh, on there last night, and she was talking about uh, the premier management company, Bob Bill. Remember, that was uh, one of Ruth's best buddies, Mm -hmm. and that's going on. Then the other thing I'll say is that we're taking a look now, doing some investigative uh, uh, activities on these state housing development authorities. Oh so we got God. Mishta, Mishta uh, uh, Michigan State Housing Development, and there's a Delaware Housing Development, and there's a Tennessee and a New York, Chicago, the whole nine yards. But we're starting to take a look at that because we've got at least three people whose Section 8 certificates are being tampered with. Mm-hmm. And we would urge people, if you're uh, receiving a Section 8 certificate, that's what you use right now, you're having trouble with it, the management company is not making the repairs or whoever it is who's supposed to make them, call us down at Welfare Rights so we can get some information uh, about how Section 8 is working in Michigan. Uh, Marion, you have about 45 seconds to say goodbye. I think it was a good program. I uh you know, next time we're going to have to probably expand how, how long we stay here because uh, people were on the phone, and, you know, we love to hear from you. Uh, m- maybe you can uh, call in next week and uh, and, re- and uh, tell us what you were thinking about this particular program we had today. All right. Uh, we're about to close up for the day. This is... Um the 4th of July, Independence Day, and, you know, we all think about what does that mean, independent from what. You know, things are very, very difficult, but the answer is what uh, uh, Mr. Garrett says. We have to get together. We have to organize, and then we have to organize, and then we have to organize. So if the Lord is willing and the creek does not rise, we will be back here next Friday and hope that you will be back as well. By then, Tim will have figured out whatever's not working and plug everything in and dust everything off and get up that tower and go all the way up oh, there and give the him tower. a new fuse or whatever he got to do. Don't go you see, uh, I tell you, you know. So call us at Welfare Rights. You need any help, and we're really looking for Section 8 holders so we can get some stuff. Look at that. There's a Lindsay, Lindsay Porter. Porter. My goodness. All righty. Uh, this is the Welfare Rights Ask Welfare Rights broadcast going off the air, and all we say at the end is goodbye. Bye. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabree. We are living through unprecedented times with a global pandemic now approaching its third year. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. See if you qualify, please visit. Call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help.